What's poppin', people? I'm back. Oh, man, it's been a good Sunday. Went to church this morning. Seen Brother Trey preach a pretty good message about his little daughter. Watch his Paw Patrol, man, and just how, you know, I guess there's these, uh, I haven't really looked into it that hard, but he had these toys of each each puppy that's on Paw Patrol, and then this kid that run kind of tells her all of them what to do and what stuff happens and just kind of like... You know, puts the fires out and like, it was a pretty cool message, man. God bless him. He was bringing the heat today for the Lord. I uh, I had a little message here I want to share with y'all. Try to do these every Sunday, Sunday evening, and uh, just getting the flow of it. And uh, I like it. I enjoy it. I think uh, I have a lot to offer. So um, uh, as far as just my kind of people of crowd and just kind of, you know, touch some hearts and minds out there on, on some stuff that I've, I've overcame and just, just here to help guys. I love you guys. So remember that, but I got one, uh, I'm going to call, uh, first just pray in real quick. Father God, help me say what, uh, you would want me to say, not what I want to say. Let your will be done and not mine. And, uh, let me read this word to where it can help others and, and to where they can help others with it. And let your love just continue to fester in all of us, Dad. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. My God, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to call this one uh, uh, Look, Look Deeper in Maze. A little deeper, and uh, I'm gonna pop it off with some scripture, man. I like to really open up my preaching with some with some scripture, man, with with the truth, and uh, being the Holy Spirit's gonna gonna do our best to relay my message, our message to you. So, all for Father's sake, for His glory, and uh, we got a second Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And <clears throat> I kept, Holy Spirit kept putting me in them little cells. Uh, you know, done a few county trips and some prison and like some rehabs and stuff. And I've always... I was bunkied up with somebody that was just going through it or just didn't know why they was going through it or just kind of some some examples here on some stuff that I've heard through the years of uh, and just, you know, how uh, how I've seen it. Uh, first off, the cops don't have a scheme for you and they didn't do it. Uh, you're not... You, your your dad not being there, um, he didn't do it. And you following your brother's footsteps, he didn't do it. Your grandpa passing, he didn't do it. Uh, you didn't finish school, that didn't do it. Um, stealing didn't do it. Uh, you getting used and abused didn't do it. Your family splitting up didn't do it. The judge didn't do it. The prison facility didn't do it. And there's phones in prisons right now too, man. So big love to my homies in there. And if you're seeing this, man, watch it, man. And um, just know that your spouse didn't do it. And, and, and most importantly, God didn't do it. You're sitting in that spot because, and I'm not here to, I'm here to help, man. So anybody can do that. Of course, you know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm here to, to walk you through that stuff. And I, I, it's, they didn't do it, but at the same time, it's, I keep thinking of this like turn and burn, you know what I mean? Either turn or burn, you know? And it's, it's, it's free will. That's the tricky part here. That's why why Father God gets a lot of flack for this one because it's free will 
to really bite on some of this stuff and, and let the enemy kind of take you down these 15 year, 10 year, five year little bunny trails of hatred or, or misunderstanding or just, it's the scene, man. You're seeing this. It's the scene. It's the scene. It's the scheme. Do you know what I mean? See this. See this. Pay attention to this. Here. Here. You know, it's, a, it's an entity showing you these things, you know. But uh, God really wants you to, um, that burning in your heart, your mind, he wants you to turn and give that to Father and, and, and really like, God's not doing it, man. It's, it's, this is the part that God don't like seeing, man. He don't like seeing his kids hurt. So I'm going to walk you through an offense or why you're sitting in that cell or even coming out of themselves, out of the facilities and still stuck in here and stuck in here in prison. You know what I mean? So I'm going to walk you out of them, these areas in your life, man. I'm going to try my best to. So it's stuff that's worked tremendously for me. And um, I'm going to keep it as simple as possible, man. I, I know it's going to probably blow your mind, but um, if an offense happens, you know, you notice... I know, I know, I keep seeing my head and my heart like this little bronze-like doorknob wiggling. You know them old school. You can, I can hear it in my ears. And the door opens, and, you know, our boss offended us. We had our toe smashed. I don't know, something little just kind of like, you know, and this, this is kind of like where the door is opening and in our house, you know, in our temple. Our house is right here in our heart. You know, this is our, our whole body is our house, you know. And you can feel the doorknob coming in. You know, it's it's like sitting in these cells. The enemy penetrated us. And this is where he's coming in. You know, he's wiggling the doorknob. And he comes in through an offense. Through one of these people I said earlier, you know, the judge or your family or your grandpa dying or one of the cops don't like you or it's 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 he comes in through that way and he wants you to get an offense that way he can he can run you through that he can go in your heart and your mind in your house all the way down this like you know this little hallway man and he can set up shop in your three-bedroom house back there and, and, and take over one of the bedrooms so the offense is picked up we got to discern that Something's in our, I don't like this. Discern it, figure it out, you know. Uh, confess it. Confess what's wrong, what's what's going on in here. And repent for it. Turn back, you know. And give Father God, you know, in your heart and your mind where the enemy's penetrating that you had. Turn back, quit doing that. Well, the Holy Spirit's going to help you quit doing that when you repent for it. When your tongue confesses it like it and repents for it, it just does this cool thing and um when you do that as soon as you repent it the holy trinity immediately walks back down that hallway the hallway that you keep peeking down you know something's down there in that bedroom well they walk down there with you hand to hand you know and they 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 don't like they, they open the door and they tell the enemy you gotta go in the name of jesus christ of nazareth amen and you end it in his name. And um, that's the unseen part. I know it sounds silly. As, I mean, you're probably, you know, like, what? That's all. Yeah, that's, you'll feel your heart and your mind just kind of like let go of that offense or whatever's been dragging you down or been putting you in prison for three years straight or three times straight now or, or just stuck on that, you know, I don't like my mom. I don't like my dad. They're the reason I'm here. Um, you know, it's, it's, the enemy used all those things to penetrate you. They, they didn't do nothing. You've been on the biscuit as far as like believing in that scheme, that lie, you know, and now you're sitting in prison for it. And <clears throat> just remember in Revelations 3.20, here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. So you call his name. You, you know what I mean? It's 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 kind of simultaneously. You got an offense 
like a, a demon wanting to come in here and, and hang out and live in your house. But at the same time, you got Jesus outside the door on the on the doorstep with a bucket and a mop ready to go in there and clean up his mess and get him back out of there. So call on him and use his name and, and, and really like clean your temple up, clean them charges, clean them any any humanly stuff. That ain't, uh, to be honest, there ain't nobody down here has got problems with us. We're, we should all be in peace and harmony and joy. If there's an issue in that, then we need to repent and confess that person or our, or our anger off that situation or whatever it may be and get back aligned with the truth. So demons can't penetrate us and, and, and steal our joy and our peace for the day, man. So, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Jesus Christ of Nazareth, man, just saying his name. They have no authority. They have to leave. You, you, you can say that commonly too. You don't even have to really yell it. Just saying that name holds so much power and authority. So if you're getting a jam, you know, I want to do like a little, um, and they do, it, it's, it starts with, uh, it starts with, with, with being little kids, man, as far as planting that seed and that little, cause I had, and these, these demons, man, they, they, I know it sounds funny cause I never really talk like this either, man, but it's for real. There's demons out there that walk in this air and like, you know what I mean? And, and, and to going to and fro from generations to generations, from grandpa to grandpa to grandpa to grandpa, you know what I mean? From mom to mom to mom or whatever. And like, for instance, I had a stepdad, man, that wouldn't leave my mom. I mean, like, dated my mom for like six, seven years. And I was really young, man. And I man, he had like eight, nine protective orders on him. I mean, like, he was a really disturbed guy, man. Like foot, like the enemy, demon spirits were around this guy, just and just portrayed him as just this. He was scary, man. He was. It, it, it was, and it was. I remember something looking back on that, like I didn't. Uh, I didn't want to be like that. You know what I mean? Like I just remember, like man, there's something different. I don't like that. And it's weird how I end up catching the anger bug. And end up, you know, my mom, she was she was on some drugs there for a little while when she was younger. But I remember looking at her even on cigarettes and, and, and uh, some of the stuff she was going through. Just I would never, you know what I mean? I ended up doing math. Everything she went through went, ended up going to prison. So, like, it, it's weird because I didn't want to do them things. But there was an entity down here, demons in the air, that was slaughtering them at the time. And I just kind of caught confectious to it. And I started acting like that. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It, it's not their fault. The enemy was kind of like bashing them at the time too. You know what I mean? But this is why I stress. I can't stress enough on it. It happens the first. Five, I mean, not just happens, but like it's it's important. First five years, you know, and and so forth, all the way until they get old enough. Keep them in church. Get them in church, men, fellas out there. Like, lead your women. Lead your kids to church, man. Because there's going to come a time when, when that kid grows up. I was on, uh, 38 years old before I really truly learned what the word repentance was. What, I mean, New Testament, Old Testament. Like I was, I, I, I was, man, I was so shell-shocked on, on the stuff I didn't know. Just from merely not being grown up in it, you know. And that's why I can't stress enough on, on getting your children to church and, and first thing and just even if you don't know what's going on get them in there the holy spirit's gonna do that thing too you know what i mean so the holy spirit's gonna take off on them little kids you get them around anointed people and around the preachers around you know what i mean just even if, if that's why we go to church if we don't know what we're doing sometimes we got to go get affirmation get confirmation get like prayers and, and requests for prayer like it's it's the church is a body man it's 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 to help recharge the body of Christ, you know, I mean, like we all have a part in this. Like we, there ain't Jesus left the 99 to go get the one. So that's what the body does too. When the one's down, the 99 go back and get the one, you know, like it's no one gets left behind. It's like the Marines, man. That's why I call myself the Jesus Marine. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it really is in, in a sense, militant ran kind of as far as like, Father ain't like as far. Father loves us, man. Like he, some of us out here have more important jobs than others. As far not more important, I didn't mean that, but like uh, more um, 
see, we all have different stuff, man. More stress involved, different straight, different kinds of stresses, but like not stress, but like it's called suffering for the Lord, man. Sometimes we gotta suffer in our gifts to be able to share them and like sometimes I don't want to get on here and preach, but I do it anyway because I'm just trying to be obedient and, and, and listen to my father because I do have gifts. I do have, you know, people skills and I can hit a different area that other preachers can't hit and go in these rooms that other people don't want to go in and like, you know what I mean? I have that to, to, to offer. So like I show up and do it sometimes even I don't want to, you know what I mean? So thank you father for that ability. But, uh, for real, had I known as a kid to, to follow, Jesus, I really would have. And there's nothing against my parents or any of my stepdads or any like, it's all good. It's just, and that's been repented for anger. There ain't no anger towards that. I just mean like, had I knew, you know, if there was a couple more little, I don't know, there was a, there was a seed or two planted just in some good people in my life, but not really church, man. Not really church, just decent human beings that raised me, you know what I mean? And that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's God stuff too. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, I was clueless when I opened the Bible, man. I was 38 years old. I was kind of embarrassed. I should have knew more than that. It's not a competition, but like, and the Father God, he, he, it's his timing on everything anyway. But like, I just... Man, I feel like I was studying this this whole other world for 38 years. I know all about the schemes from the devil, man. I've lived that life for 38 years. So now, these these last couple of years has just been like, whew, other side of the fence, milk and honey type feeling, man. It's just different. It's just my heart, my mind is just at peace and just like, I'm not perfect, man. I still have my battles and my little hiccups and my little oops and, you know, like, but I, I keep going and just, I encourage y'all to do that too. And I pray for that. And, um, uh, that's why I kind of jump on here and do these videos and, and, and it's good to know I can handle the, who's at the door, the doorknob now, you know, I can see the unseen now, as far as like, I can see where this, that's one of my discernment gifts on the Holy Spirit. Um, there's nine gifts from the Holy Spirit. And I, I feel like an FBI agent with the discernment gift. Like, if you lying to me, I ain't tripping. It ain't none of my business if you are. But, like, I'd rather you not because if you do lie to me, the Holy Spirit tells me that you are. So, like, I, it's, it's so cool. Like, I don't even have to try on that one. I know when people are lying or when people is the truth or when there's a spirit around or there's some evil going on or, like, mm -mm, in the room and around people. Mm-mm. I'll call it out. Father, God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, I need you now. Michael, Gabriel, all y'all. You know, I just, I, I, I call it out. I call the evil out, man. I want it off my people. Let my people go. And, uh, but I, uh, <clears throat> what else we got? Oh, uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be really honest, man. Um, these spirits, man, these evil spirits, sometimes they, notice how I say spirits, plural, you know, um, because it's not the Holy Spirit, singular, you know, that's, it's Holy, it, it, evil spirits, it's, it's, it's demons, it's de demonic stuff out here in the air floating around, sometimes it's stuff we think of ourselves, because we're just dirty sinners like that, but we need to change our mind by repentance, change our way of thinking, and, um, just know, and that guy that, that was with my mom, and bro, we're, we're tight now. Like, we're cool. Like, we're coolest relationship ever. Like, yeah, I end up kind of like him, but, like, growing up a little bit. But I end up watching him. He, 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 he found a woman that was going to church and, like, turned his life over, and, like, he is doing amazing. And it's funny how you don't want to watch these kind of people, but at the same time, you kind of are. And, like, that's... He's part, he's, you know what I mean? I watch him kind of like how he done with his wife. And like, that's what I'm doing with my wife now. You know what I mean? As far as like, you know, we, uh, Father God used Romans 8, 28. For I use all the things for the good who love me and walk according to my ways. So me and him, you know, we're walking to his ways. So it's like, he used my anger towards him, hurt my mom. Me going to prison, like he used it all. Like me and him are are cool now have been for a few years like it's 
it, he used it all the curses that were following us he 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 now he gets to laugh at the enemy we get to laugh at the enemy he's like look what god did to us now like now we're cool and like you know what i mean so it's it's really cool how that one worked out as far as like um i don't have to look at people now back on my past or that person this and that person man it's not the people our fight ain't with the people it's with entities and spirits out here man that jump in us sometimes or jump around us or, or throw some thoughts in our heads or like you know it's it's real life man it's spiritual warfare so it's going on all around us so um just know that i ain't trying to focus too much on demons because i love jesus christ and he's my big bro he's all of our big bro he's our lord and savior and i just i just want people to kind of like open their bible and just always be looking for jesus but at the same time you've got to know these things too you know what i mean so i gotta kind of go over them and just know that demonic spirits, they, they do, they follow, they follow families around, they follow dads around, they follow, I mean, it gets, it gets real, you know what I mean? Grandpas and lineages and like, it's, it's, they torment them, they torment them all the way into prisons, all the way into restraining orders or, or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Aggression, um, it gets really, really crazy out there, it's, it's for real man it's in it's in family it's in everyday families torment and the torture and just the grandpas and all the you know sometimes they don't even know it like it's just a spirit that's been following them and making them angry and they they pass it down to their kid and they pass it down to their kid and they pass it down to their kid and it's it's not really passing it down but what it is is the same spirit just following y'all to the next you know what I mean? And then a sign different. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, it's the domino like effect on this. It's crazy, man. And, um, just remember, uh, Jesus Christ beats all that stuff. So, uh, and <clears throat> I wanted to tell you a little story about, um, uh, about, th about two years ago. Yeah. Right, right, right before I started my walk. Uh, uh, about a year and, year and three quarters, however you say that. Um, we, uh, me and my wife, we was kind of going through it. And, um, she was at this trailer park and I was about to go talk to her. And this was four years prior to this it was the same trailer park that I went and did some time for, for being aggressive to a couple of neighbors and my ex because I didn't want to break up with her and stuff. And I'm telling you all this story because there's some testimony here as far as like a spirit trying to follow me and trying to hinder me up. And um, I don't know what his name was. Brandon Walsh, my brother Brandon Walsh, helped me call all them evil spirits off me and repent for that stuff and repent for working for the enemy and, and just everything breaking lineage breaking soul ties to everything back behind me and like just really went to work on that stuff and um but anyways i ended up coming to talk to my wife and it was the same abandonment feeling same control i wanted to control the same situation situation with the female it was the same trailer park and it was just like instead of this trailer it was right across the street in the next trailer within a six year gap and the same scheme man the same scheme as far as like just control of the situation abandonment um just it, it just all of it man it, it it really freaked me out it freaked me out when i got saved i looked back at that and i'm like man the, the enemy almost got me on a round two at the same trailer park same sit kind of situation same kind of control, same kind of abandonment feeling from someone leaving. And that it, it, it just, it was like the familiarity like flipped me out. But my buddy Brandon ended up say, uh, getting me saved like a year or a week later, a week or two later. And I ended up just kind of going into like two months of just studying the word, reading my Bible and just kind of when I got saved, I really just jumped in, left my wife alone and just focused on me. And, um, yeah, it was just, it was so crazy how real life that was. And same trailer park, same situation, same, 
it had been the same prison sentence, same like double times two, you know, and it just reminded me of a spirit following me and trying to get me hemmed up, trying to get me in prison, trying to get me like locked away and like, it was, it was freaky, man. And I had to break all that through repentance and through, and, and a lot of, um, breaking soul ties and, and rebuking Satan out of my life and, and rebuking witchcraft out of my life, rebuking anybody that had witchcraft on me. Like just, I have a whole Jesus Marine book that I built this last year of just all this, I mean, just different types of stuff of different repentance and, and confessionals and stuff that I had to really like break through me and my buddy Brandon and uh, my wife uh, really just spent a lot of time on just thinking of different different words the enemy uses on us, different type of just, and, and coming back with the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and beating it all. And uh, I'm, I'm putting it on my channel, so I think I'm on chapter 12 now. There's 25 chapters I put on there. So, And then another thing, my wife, um, she had a grandpa that, you know, took his own life. She had an aunt that took her own life. And then my my wife around that trailer park time was really depressed and really like and, and took a little Polaroid picture of herself and with a gun in her mouth and like was really gonna like do the thing man and until me and me and Brandon came over and started talking to her and just kind of like sharing about Jesus and stuff and and like she redevoted her life to Jesus and like it just really took back off and like um it walked beside her family for a few decades you know but now it stops with her too and it stops with me. Now we can see everybody younger than us and our family around us and, and call it out, get off of them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen. And um, let all the glory be to God, man. And, and when you're doing that stuff and, and stay humble, we are, we are, we do have power and authority. It's not to be slung around like like some, take care of it, man. It's, it's Jesus, it's the Holy Spirit, it's Father. We're out here to love, to disciple others, and to love our neighbors like we love ourselves. Like Jesus loved us, you know? And um, just know that, man. Know that uh, God loves you so much, and I love you, but he loves you even more than I do. And he's gave us all the power and authority down here to live a Matthew 3-2 life. Uh, repent for the kingdom is at hand. And repent. And turn back, turn your ways, and and see the kingdom is here. It's right here on earth. You don't have to go nowhere to get it. You can receive it right here on the front porch, on a video. It's all around us. Church is all around us. When two or more are gathered in my name, I'm there. I'm one. So the other one watching here, that's two. So God's right here. So remember that. And um, I love you guys. And let's pray out of here real quick. Father God, thank you for this word. Please let this word touch hearts and minds and uh, let it help disciple others. And uh, thank you for your fellowship, Dad. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for you, Dad. We love you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Peace out. Godspeed, family.